Hello, I'm Pastor Hank. I'm so excited to get to spend a few minutes with you today. I'm honored that you'd take the time to tune in and listen, and I'm just believing God to do something special for you today. You know, I, I, I want to pray for you in a minute, but I, I just feel that some of you watching, there's somebody listening that, that you just, you're just in the middle of something. You're just in the middle of a battle. You're in the middle of a crisis in your life. Uh, you know, uh, I love what Isaiah 46 says. says, God sees the ending from the beginning. And, you know, he already knows how this is going to end up. He's already, he's already, it didn't surprise him. He's already got an answer for you. And I'm believing before this broadcast is over that God touches your heart and speaks to you and tells you what you need to hear. You know, he loves you. And I guess that's the, the most hidden fact, the most hidden truth that there is, that God really loves us. You know, so many times we go around, we think we're feeling like God's mad at us. We mess up. We make a mistake. We feel like he's mad at us. But, you know, I want to tell you something today. God's not mad at you. He already knows you're going to make some mistakes. He already knows you're going to fall. And, and, and the, the way he wants us to see him is he wants us to see him as he picks us up and gives us another chance. You know, so I don't know what you're going through, but I just know the God that's going to get you through it. I love what Psalm says, when I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear any evil. And, uh, you know, maybe you feel like you're in that valley today. But the reason we don't have to fear, fear any evil is because he's with us. And you've got a Lord that loves you. You've got a God that loves you. He sent his son Jesus to die for you. And he gave everything he had for you. He wanted you back. And, you know, just think about that the next time you're getting down on yourself or you're feeling bad about yourself. Just say, well, I, I might not like myself, but God likes me. And, you know, if you look through the Word, you'll find out that's the truth. He loves you. Why don't you right where you are, why don't you bow your head and pray with me for just a minute here. Father, I just come before you. You know everyone that's listening to this broadcast, watching this broadcast. You, you, you know everything they're going through. You know those family troubles. You know those, those, those trials, those, those challenges with their children. God, you know the financial need that that one family is going through. And God, you, you, you just know the discouragement that they're facing. You know everything that's going on. And so I'm just asking you for a special touch today. I'm just asking you that you'd bless them beyond anything they ever dreamed. And Holy Spirit, I'm believing you right now to begin to touch their life and show them. Show them the love of God. Show them how much he cares about them. And we just thank you for that and praise you for it. In Jesus' name. I hope you, I hope you prayed that prayer with me or received that prayer because God wants to do big things in your life. Now for just a couple minutes here, we're going to go to one of our services and, and, and show you some of it. But I'll be back again at the end to talk to you again. So just get ready for what God's got for you. Are you ready today? I want to kind of finish up a little bit or add to or whatever we call it what we went through last week and uh, I want to read to you first I want to read you Isaiah 46 10 and it's God he just gets you saying he's God and he says that he's declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasures. I love that one translation says, says only I can tell you, only I can tell the future before it happens. Mm. Everything I plan will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish. Yes, sir. You're the boss. Boy, I like that. Whoo, is he your boss? He's the boss, and he's declared things for us, and uh, uh, I just tell you, anything he declares for you, anything he plans for you is going to be good, huh? Now, it might not be too good getting you to the place where you receive it, but, but if you'll just go ahead and, and follow through and just let him lead you and guide you, it's going to be good. I guess the biggest way, the biggest, the biggest weapon the enemy has against us is condemnation. 
and, 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 and little thinking and making us think bad about ourselves and making us feel like we're nothings and making us feel like we're, we're, we're just insignificant and what we do doesn't really matter and I could never make a, a difference. But you know, that's a lie straight from hell. Amen. Man, God loves you. He's got a plan for you. He sees you the finished product. How many are not yet the finished product? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, but we're on our way, aren't we? We're on our way. We're works in progress. Yeah. Glory to God. I've, I'm going to keep on going because everything he's got for me is good. And when God looks at you, you know, it, it, the, the tendency is to get us to see ourselves little, to see us, get us to see ourselves bad and insignificant. And because and, 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 if, if you see that way, if you think that way, then your life becomes that way. You follow, you follow what you think, how you see yourself, what you think about yourself. You follow that pattern. You follow that course. And what you think in your heart is the way you will be. Your most dominant thoughts will guide your life that direction. And so it's important for us to get in this word. It's important for us to see what God sees. And it's important for us to think like God thinks about us. And I'm telling you what, he sees your life complete. He sees your life finished. He doesn't see you where you are today. He sees you where you're going to end up. Oh, yeah, yeah, give him some holler there or something, man. He, 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 sees, he sees, he's got a picture in his mind of how he plans for you to end up, and he's working you towards that. He's forming you towards that. He's, he's, he's doing things in your life to get you ready to, to be there, and, and he just he looks and he sees the, the, the finished product. Man, I like that. I like that. Boy, God's good. He knows your end from your beginning. He knows how he plans for you to end up. And if you just won't quit, if you'll just stay in faith, he'll make sure you end up there. And somebody listening to me, you already gave up. You just you think you gave up. But you gave up and you quit and you turned to Hey, I'm telling you what, it's still not too late. He sees you how he planned you. He sees your end from your beginning. And he says, you just come back to me and watch what I can do for you. You just give your heart and life to me and see what I can do in it. I guess the problem is, the problem is how we see ourselves. So I ask you today, how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself victorious? Do you see yourself the righteousness of God? Do you see yourself uh, an overcomer? Do you see yourself the answer, not the problem? Do you, do, you, do you see the positive things or do you see the negative things? That's a battle we all fight. It's, a, it's, it's something we all go through. So, you know, if you're sitting there and you're thinking, you're thinking the other way, don't, 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 don't get under condemnation. That's what we're talking about. Don't get under condemnation about it. Just say, no, hold it. I'm not going to pay attention to what I think and what I feel. I'm going to pay attention to what you think and what you feel. I'm going to start seeing myself like you see me, God. And you see me, man. You see me as the righteousness of God. He's working, he's working everything in your life, everything that happens in your life. He's working it towards your end. And that's the, the beauty about this is it doesn't matter even if you've been backslid, if you've gotten away from God, if you failed him miserably, it really doesn't matter. He still sees the end. He says, well, will you get back up? Will you just brush yourself up off and get back up and come on, follow me. I got something for you. Never too late. He'll take even those negative things, even those bad things, even the, the, the things in your life that were totally, that you did, that were totally away from him. He'll still take that stuff and work it in your life for your good. Yeah. Somebody said the other day, said, I've just wasted all my life. You haven't wasted it. He's going to take it and he's going to turn it for your strength, for your good. Romans 8, 28 says, We know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to His purpose. Do you understand? I'm telling you, He's got a purpose for you. He's got a purpose for your life. Do you love Him? Yes. Do you want His purpose in your life? Yes. 
then if that's the direction you're going, then he's going to take all those things and work them for your strength and for your good. Oh, listen, I'm telling you, see, with, with Jesus, because of what Jesus did, you can't fail. I mean, even when you fail, you don't fail. I mean, even when you blow it, it isn't blown. I mean, even when you get away, you're not away. I mean, he's still saying, come on, come on, get back in the game, come on, get up, come on. Quit thinking that way and start thinking my way. I'll work it for your good. See, you need to see yourself like he sees you. Now, the devil seems to do everything he can to keep us from finding God's purpose in our life. And let me just say this, your purpose is individually things that you will accomplish as an individual. Your purpose, you know, he's called some, his purpose for some is, is that they're great in the area of finances. He's called some that, they're, that they're, they excel in other areas. And, 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 and your purpose is, is all those personal things that, that it takes to survive and it takes to conquer and it takes to win while you're here on earth. His purpose for some of you is that you be well educated. Some of you that you be doctors. Some of his, he's got a purpose and a plan for your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. But remember this, his purpose and his plan for your life always works into his master plan. And his master purpose, his master plan is that he doesn't want anybody to perish. So everything he does in your life, it is so you can affect the kingdom of God more. That's seeking him first. That's going after him. And so I say, you ought to be all you can be. You ought to do all you can do. You ought to just, you ought to just do everything you think to do and everything you think you can and everything you think you can't. And you just ought to be all you can be, as big as you can, because the bigger you are and the more you are, the more you can do for God, the more you can do for the kingdom. So just, just keep it in the right perspective there. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm being more. Not so I can be big shot. Not so I can be important. I'm doing this so, so, I, can, so I can have a bigger platform to magnify the Lord. Well, thank you, Lord. That wasn't in my notes, but. So you got to see yourself as he says. you got to look forward. We need to look ahead. We need to anticipate uh, the things that lie in our future, the things that lie ahead. We need to, we need to, we need to look for those things. Don't, don't limit yourself to what happened yesterday. Don't limit yourself to the, to the failures of yesterday. Don't look backwards. Look forwards. That's what Paul was saying in Hebrews. Where's Hebrews? Is that in the New Testament? Hebrews 12. That's what he's saying here. He's saying, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded, he just got through talking about all these people that have overcome the world with their faith. And he says, since we're, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, every sin that so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Glory to God. He says, look to Jesus. <laughs> He's the author and the finisher of your faith. Look to him. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to run your race. Look to him. Mm. Said he, he, he <laughs> says, for, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Man, lay it down. Lay it aside. Uh, don't let yesterday's failures determine what your future success. Don't let, don't let yesterday's victories. Okay, you did good yesterday. You did great yesterday. But don't put your eye on that. Put your eye on the future. How much greater good you're going to do. How much more good you're going to do. How much more God's going to use you. Look forward. Leonard, man, you're going to get excited here. Glory. I'm telling you, we serve a God. We serve a good God. We serve a God that's healing somebody in here right now. I just I got a testimony of, a, of, of some people that had cancer, and, and, and they went back for, an, for another check, and it wasn't there. And somebody said, oh, 
Yeah, give him some praise. Somebody said, oh, a wrong diagnosis. And I told him, I said, you're not going to convince that group around here that that's a wrong diagnosis because we know who the healer is. You can explain it away all you want to, but I know in whom I am believed. And I am persuaded that he's able to keep me till the end. And he's able to keep me healthy. Glory to God. Yeah, just go ahead and clap. Let me get my breath here. <laughs> Woo, glory. Another, another, another lady that is going to have to cut a patch out of her back and do skin grafts and everything because of cancer. And by the time she got there, they cut a little bitty square and got it all. I said, isn't that amazing? Isn't God something? He who believes and is baptized will be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow them who, those who believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons. They'll, they'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt them. Uh, if they, they'll lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. That's basically saying, if you believe. Now, now, now. God showed me something the other day. I shared it with a few of you already, but, 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 but he said, move the comma there. Move the, move the semicolon there. He said, uh, <clears throat> and these signs will follow those who believe. He said, move that semicolon. It's in the wrong place there. So I read it another way. It said, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. See, I'm not believing and I lay hands on you and you're here. I'm believing in his name. That's easier for me. I can believe in his name. Now, I might pray. Hey, how many know when we pray for somebody and we pray and we go, oh, I hope it'll happen. I wonder if it'll happen. I, I just believe it'll happen. I, no, no, you're not supposed to believe in that result. You're supposed to believe in his name. I believe in his name. He's got a name above every name. His name is Jesus, and every other name has to bow its knee to that name. So right now, do you believe in Jesus' name, Greg? You believe in his name. You believe in the power of his name. Then you will lay hands on her knee, and it will be healed. Woo, glory to God. That's easier for me. How about you? Because I believe in his name. Huh? I believe in his name. <laughs> I believe in his name. Huh? I'm not believing that you're healed. I'm believing in his name. His name is what heals you. His name is what brings those answers to you. His name is what brings those finances. His name is what causes the devil to cringe and run and cower down before you. His name. It's not the act that you did something. No, it's his name. Well, some of you will get that, and I hope you get it in the middle of the night and it wakes you up. I can believe in his name. Can't you, Jerry? I can believe in his name, man. Huh? I can't believe in much I do because I just make too many mistakes, and I just fall too short, and I just, I just have trouble believing in me, but I can believe in him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I believe in his name, devil. you got to run. you got to get out of my way. Okay. Commercial's over. But you need to look ahead. You need to anticipate the good things in your future. You need to anticipate this God that you serve that's going to do stuff that just blows your mind. You know, God would just like to blow your mind every day. Woo, you ought to wake up in the morning. Man, don't wait till in the morning. Start it right now. But you ought to wake up every morning and go, God, I just believe you to blow my mind today. Psalms 139.16 says that all, the psalmist said, all the days for me were written before the book, <coughs> but it were written in your book before any of them came to be. He said all the things, all the things that you've ordained for me were written down. You had your mind made up. They were written in the book before, before they ever came to pass. See, God saw the finished work in you. 
you know, you need to quit seeing yourself so bad and so everything. Hey, we're all bad. If we all got what we deserve, we'd go to hell. We were all sinners. But while we were sinners, he came and gave his life for me. He didn't wait for Hank to straighten up. He said, I came for you to pay the price for you. Now just receive the price. Just receive the grace. Just use your faith and reach out there and receive it. I'll make you better, Hank. I'll make you better. Just receive me. Come after me. I'll take care of the rest. Why, when you mess up, I'll make you feel so, you, you'll be so uncomfortable that you, 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 you'll want my peace so bad that you'll do anything to keep it. When I let you taste my goodness and taste my presence, nothing else will ever satisfy you again. <laughs> Ooh, I'm telling you what. You get into that holy of holies with him. You get into that place that Jesus secured that we could get into with the Father. And I'm telling you what, you can make all the money in the world. You can accomplish all the, the, the things in the world and nothing will fill that spot. Amen. Nothing will fill that thing. Nothing will compare to that. Amen. Woo, because God's good. Mm. And he saw that finished work in you before you were ever born. He saw how he, how he wanted you to end up, and, 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 and you think, well, I've wasted too long. I've waited too long. No, you haven't because you're still breathing. That's why he's letting you still breathe because he says, I can still do it. I can still do it. We'll do a crash course here. I can still do it. Do you still want it? Do you still come after, will you still come after me? Will you still put me first place? We can still do it. I don't know. I, a few years ago, or might even been a few months ago but it seems like years now but I just I just thought well you know I've kind of run my course I kind of did all I can do I kind of and 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 I just changed my thinking I just started whoa hold it hold it I'm just getting started I'm just getting started God can do more in a couple minutes than I can do in a couple years <clears throat> he's just getting started I love what he told yeah I give him some praise <clears throat> he told Jeremiah he said before I formed you in the womb I knew you he said, before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. You understand what he is telling, what he is telling Jeremiah? He said, before you were born, I had a plan for you. Before you, were, before you were even in the womb, I had your life mapped out. I had your steps ordered. I had everything about you ordained. I planned before you ever came into existence, before you were ever a thought in your mom and dad's mind, before that I had a plan for you. He said it for Jeremiah and he's saying it for you and he's saying it for me. We just need to believe what he says as much as we believe what the world says. Uh, it's true for you. God's got your life mapped out. He's got your steps ordered. Amen. Glory to God. And you can misstep. You can mess up. You can, you can do all that. I'm telling you what, he, it, it doesn't matter if you get off track, if you're trying, he's going to get you right back on track. Oh, I'm afraid to make a decision. I'm afraid I might make the wrong decision. Just make one. He'll get you back on track. Just pay attention. Listen. Well... I'm telling you what, he's got a plan and he'll bring it to pass if you let him. <laughs> see, what you, what you think, how you see yourself is important and what you think about yourself is important. Amen. How does God think about you? You, got, you can either think how you think about you or you've got to think how God thinks about you. And he told Jeremiah in the 29th chapter, he said, he said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. You want to hear the thoughts? He said, I know what I'm thinking. How many think God knows what he's thinking? I mean, how many think God wakes up in the morning and says, I just don't know what to think today. <laughs> he knows what he's thinking. He said, I know the thoughts that I think about you. He said, they're thoughts of peace and not evil. He said, they're thoughts to give you hope, to give you a future. Yeah, I hope I've said something today that helped you. That's what I want to do more than anything else. I want God to be able to touch your life and give you the help that you need.
If you'd like to hear this message in its entirety, there's a number at the bottom of your screen. If you just dial that number, just ask for the CD, we'll send it to you free of charge. If you want to send an offering, you're welcome to, but you don't have to. We want, we want you to be helped more than anything else. I want to pray for you in a minute, but before I do, since I mentioned that, there's many of you that you help support the broadcast. Some of you have been sending money for a long time, weekly or monthly. Uh, we, we're grateful for that. I just want you to know I thank you for that. Some of you just from time to time when you're able to, you send something, and I just so appreciate that. You don't realize what that does. It, it, just, it just helps me to know that, that you're partnering with me. And, you know, we want to reach people. I believe, I believe time's short, and I believe we need to tell everybody we can about Jesus. Uh, this broadcast is one of the ways we do that. You won't ever hear me get on here and beg for money or ask for money, but I just do want you to know I appreciate it when you do help. And, and we have people that get saved every week. We have somebody every week that, that contacts us and tells us that God was able to do something in their life. And you have a part of that. And so I, I just want you to know I'm grateful, and I thank you for it. Uh, some of you watching this broadcast, you don't know that you're right with God. I mean, if you were to die right now, you don't know that you'd go be with God. Uh, maybe, you've, maybe you've gone to church. Maybe you've done all the things that we tell you you're supposed to do, but something inside of you, you still don't know for sure. If that's you, I want to pray for you right now. So right where you are, just bow your head and say this prayer with me. Jesus, I want to be saved. You gave your life for me. You died for my sins. And I ask you to forgive me right now. I want to live for you but I need your help. So I thank you right now for that help, and I thank you for saving me. And I pray it in your name, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and really meant it, I believe something happened inside of you. The Bible said it's real easy. We just have to believe in Jesus and really mean it. If you prayed that prayer, there's a number at the bottom of your screen. If you'd call and tell the counselor that you prayed that prayer, we'd like to send you some information that will help you get on your way with the Lord, help you get into the Bible, and help you get on your way. We, we want to be a help to you here. So we try to do a lot of different things because we want you to be closer to God. While I'm on that, some of you, 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 don't, you don't have a church home. I see many of you during the week, and, and every week I see somebody, and, and the statement is, and some of you have said it to me, uh, no, we don't go to church anywhere, but we're going we're gonna to come down and see you. Well, maybe it's time to do that. I believe you need a church home. I believe you need a pastor. And if you don't have a church home, if you don't have a pastor, I want to be that pastor. So once you come down, we're between 4th and 5th on Virginia. You'll be able to see, we've got a big parking lot. Uh, there's golf carts coming back and forth. You'll be able to see how to get in. And I promise you when you get in here, the people will love you because you're important to us. And so if you don't have a church home, if you do, you need to go to church. You need to go to your church. You need to be faithful. You need to support your pastor. But if you don't have, we want to be that church. And I want to be that pastor. Hey, I always end the service with speaking blessings on people. And so I want to speak a blessing on you, if that's okay. If you can receive this with your faith, I believe God will do something special for you this week. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak your blessing on everyone that's watching, everyone that's listening. I believe you to be big in their life. And Father, I ask you to just do the things for them that you desire to do. There's somebody listening that they need a touch in their body. I ask you, Father, right now that you'd touch their body. Jesus, you gave those stripes. You took those stripes so they could be healed. And so we receive those stripes right now. We receive that healing right now. Somebody listening to me, you're in some financial difficulty. I speak his blessings into you. I believe him to bless you financially. And when he blesses you financially, you need to remember and keep him first. You need, to, you need to remember who's doing the blessing. But, Father, I speak those things. That one that's discouraged today, 
I just speak encouragement into them. And I believe you to touch their life. Thank you, Father, for blessing them. Hey, I thank you for listening today, and I'm so, so honored to get to spend a few minutes with you. Hey, I want you to know something before we go. I want you to know that I love you. But more important than that, I want you to know God loves you. 